Hello. Today I'm going to be making a rather large spin box. If you don't know what a spin box is, it's if you want to put your pour over your canvas and then you want to spin it rapidly so that you can get it to move all over the canvas and make a really cool design, you kind of need a spin box because otherwise the paint just goes flying everywhere. Um, I've done this on a smaller scale and Debbie Coles has uh, quite a few videos on acrylicpouring.com where she does them as well. What I want to do is take it bigger. Um, probably the biggest I've done is uh, maybe an 8x10 in a spin box and I want to be able to do like a 12x12 12 12 or something like that. So I need to have a larger scale box. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how I'm going to make it and then we'll just do a quick spin. See what you think. Stand by folks. Okay, so this is a box that I found on the side of the road. Somebody had apparently bought a TV and um, let the box out. And I thought, wow, what a great size and sturdiness to make a spin box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the top off of this and the top off of this and make a spin box that I can then separate and store the garage. Well, not the plan. <laughs> so, stand by. We're going to try this together. Okay, got my trusty box cutter. And this is the part that goes inside. Well, it really shouldn't matter. The top needs to come off of both of those. So, we're going to fast forward through this so it's not so boring, but just to give you an idea of what I'm doing, I'm just going to slice the top off of here. You keep a good lip back here so it stays um, true to the form. And there we go. This piece is off. Now, it should still fit in there. No problem. Sweet. But if I take the top, off of this one, then I don't have a confined space when I want to store it. So what I'm going to do is cut just the sides and maybe perforate that side so I can flip it up and then be able to flip it back down. I'm glad I did this so that I could see what I got going here. Now I want this box to slide back into here so I don't want to cut off too much of this top piece because I need it to be structured. So I'm going to come in about almost three inches and I'm going to leave that big lip. I'm going to go back over here, leave about a good three inches from here and from here. where it can bend, but not much else. So I don't want this to come off. I mean, worst case scenario, if it has to come off, it has to come off, but I'm going to try and salvage it. spin um, the paint doesn't go through the holes and onto my carpet. I also want to reinforce the corners with some duct tape just to give it a little bit longer life. So this is the plan. I hope you can see this. 
I will take this when it's all finished, slide it back in place, and then I'll make myself a little duct tape tab, and this is how I'll store it. I like it. All right. Okay, it's done. Here is the first piece. I've taped it all back here and there in the corners. Tape the inside. Tape the back side. My handy little rooftop. Tape it all inside and tape the back side. And now, all that's left to do is I want to be able to use it like this for in case I have a really big painting or slide it in and smaller if I have a smaller painting. So the next step is going to be to take my glad press and seal and line this thing because if I don't it's going to get filled with paint and then I won't be able to slide it in and out and I just need to protect it a little bit. So I'm going to take some long sheets of press and seal and primarily cover over this tape to ensure that it doesn't move when I slide the pieces in and out. So this is going to take some finagling, some more tape, but basically I'm going to cover it like so. So I'll get a nice clear piece on there. I'm going to go through and do this whole piece and then I'll come back. Okay, it's all wrapped up. I'm going to show you what I've got. This is the uh, little piece of Velcro that I told you, not Velcro, duct tape that I told you I was going to put here to kind of make a, a handle. So flip that over and I can slide them out now. Can you see? Yep, let me scoot back. Oh, handle fell off. Got to work on that. Okay. Is that better? Closer? No. Nope. Oh, this one. Okay. So. So we open it up, and if I just want to pour right here, I can. I've got a nice big space. I didn't give you dimensions, did I? I'll do that in a moment. So this part slides out, and if I want to pour in this entire area, I can because the whole thing is sealed in pressing the seal. The whole thing. If I want to separate it for whatever reason, let me show you. This whole thing is sealed. So that when I slide it in, there's not going to be any problems. Same with the other side, which I've sealed on the inside with press and seal. An entire roll of duct tape and half a roll of packing tape went into this. But I now have a perfect, very large, box that is going to be reusable for quite a while because quite frankly when I spin in here and fill this thing up full of paint if I don't feel like changing it or clearing it out at that point I can just put some more press uh, glad press and seal on top of it do another painting I can probably do about six to seven layers on top before it becomes essential for me to take it all out and get down to the basic layer again. So I would say this little 
project was a success. So, will I pour today? I don't know. I'm exhausted. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, folks. Here I am. It is the day of the pour. Now, I've got it sitting on my dining room table simply because I don't sit on the floor very easily. So, I bought this lovely cake spinner from these people. Not saying you have to buy this kind, but uh, this is the one that I found that was the least expensive. And I'm gonna use this. It's got legs that'll prop it up. And you can put your pour rather high, but because I want to contain everything down here, I'm going to fold the legs in. And it spins beautifully. And if you don't want it to spin, you pull that out. No spinning. Okay? So, I want to put this in here. And because I don't want this to be covered in paint permanently, although it will get some paint on it, I'm going to use my standy standard <laughs> press and seal and cover it so it has some protection. Love this stuff. I use it everywhere. I think they ought to take it up to NASA just like they do with the um, duct tape. Did you know that they take duct tape on every mission? It's that versatile. Okay, so I just kind of covered that up to protect it a little bit. Put it down here. Now, I know you can hear me. Sorry I'm off camera. Because this would have sunk down in there and then it would have affected how my paint flowed, I took a um, canvas board and I taped it to the back of my canvas, my stretched canvas. And it's just a two-way two, a two -way tape on the four corners just for this purpose, and I'll take it off when I'm done. But this way, this just lays there nice and flat, and voila, I can spin. Now, I haven't put, put much thought into this pour. I'm just doing it for the purpose of this video. So, if you don't like my colors or if you don't like the final pour, I'm very sorry. I just was more concerned with building the box and showing you how to do it. So... We are going to start off by putting my cup on the canvas, as you do. And we're going to use some black paint as our accent and also our move around thing. Don't you love all these technical terms? Definitely around the cup. I want some around the corners. You see why I cover everything? I use a lot of paint. Let's get that over here. Oh, this is so convenient. And I'm not sitting on the floor hurting my back. I'm Got this up on my table, so this is cool. I just want to get over these drippy edges a little bit. Then we're going to turn this bad boy loose. Let's get a little bit more here. That's a lot of paint, I know. I just want to... Gloves. Need gloves. Be right back. Voila. Okay. I could use a spatula. I could use a craft stick. I could use my hands. So, since I am properly attired with protective gloves, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my hands. I used to love doing all these projects with just bare hands until my daughter, Devin Cushman, wrote a beautiful article about the harm of uh, getting all this paint on you, so I'm religious now. I make sure I have my gloves on all the time. I know this is a lot of paint, way too much paint, 
but I just kind of wanted it to be exciting to look at. So, let's see what happens. Can you see those cells already forming? I know this is a video about the box and not the painting, but this is the product that gives me instant cells. KY. Love it. Ah, I don't think we just make a little swirl right there. Look at that. Just gorgeous. And there we go. Leave this right in the box. Let's just spin a little bit. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to rig up a handle under here so that I, instead of turning the canvas, I can actually hold the handle and swing the handle. I'll probably use, you know, a spatula or something for that purpose. <laughs> so I'm going to need to put a piece of that two-way tape between the canvas and the cake spinner to keep that from happening. Total honesty on the Patricia Fuller videos. Mistakes and all. Now I'm going to take it and tilt it just a little bit to speed up this process. I don't have to, but I don't want you to be bored to death. And then back down the same way I just came. I don't like all those zigzaggy lines, so I try to avoid that at all cost. If they're all going in two directions, it's a lot less ugly and those zigzag lines, which I despise. All right, my biggest problem is I'm not staying on the Lazy Susan. So, we're gonna stop here and we're going to figure out if I can get a piece of two-way tape on there. Stand by. Okay, well, I would call this um, a win as far as making the box, but not so much of a win as securing the painting to the cake spinning table. But we will proceed. We'll get a little bit more done just so that you can get the effect, and then when it's done and completed, I'll post a final picture. Let's see what we got. See all these corners where I'm taking the paint off with my fingers? I'll just reapply. That's about as much boredom as I can take. How about you? So it's looking pretty good. 
it will look better when it spins out completely. But I think what I'm going to do is a, a repair, lift the painting up, put a lot of tape down so I can spin it hard, and then I'll show you the final product. But for now, that's the end of the video. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Bye. I know. I said I was done. <laughs> I came back and put some tape on it, put the canvas back on. I'm getting better results, but I really do need a handle so that I don't have to keep touching the painting all the time. It's turning out really lovely. But I need to be able to do a harder, faster spin to get all that excess black off the edges. And that's just either gonna take time or I'm gonna have to tilt it and I really don't wanna mess up what's happening. So I'll tilt it a little bit more. I mean, sorry, I'll spin it a little bit more and then we'll call it done. And this time I am serious.
just when you think I'm gone. <laughs> I'll show you what it's dry. Bye.